When it comes to fancy chords and arpeggios, I only got one thing to say. Wine em, dine em, six slash nine em. Hey guys and dolls, and welcome to the very special 69th episode of Weekend Wang Shop. Here with your good pal, Uncle Ben. Kids, I got a theory when it comes to building chords and making money. I've chosen to demonstrate this theory to you guys using this very handy chart I've made. What this chart here is conveying to you is that the higher the number value of the chords that you're playing, the less amount of money that you're gonna make. See, here at the bottom of the graph, we see a G7 altered chord with a flat five and a sharp nine in it. Basically a chord name that looks like a KGB missile launch code, like something Alan Holdsworth would use. And you can see as this intersects with the graph here, that makes a very low amount of money. A common G7 chord, like you hear in some easy listening jazz, is going to earn you more like a $2 sign mark. Again, a little bit more money. Now Green Day, for example, uses nothing but power chords, or as we call them in music, five chords. And you can see whenever we hit those, we're starting to make considerably more money than these old-timey jazzers down here. Now here towards the top of the chart, we see a regular G major chord. No number signs involved whatsoever, a very low investment on that chord type. Now this is the kind of thing that you hear in a lot of modern pop country music and stuff like that. And as you can see, lower investment equals a higher profit ratio. And here at the very top of the chart here, we see the mighty sus chord, which is heavily favored by contemporary Christian musicians, which of course makes the most money. So these higher dollar chord types might not make a lot of dough, but they sure do sound cool. Today we're going to take a look at a cool chicken pick and lick that you could toss into a country or even rockabilly kind of scenario that's based around an A6-9 chord. And what this means is that it's got the notes of an A chord, A, C-sharp, E, as well as the 6th and the ninth. The 6th is an F-sharp note and the ninth is a B note, so you end up with sort of a 5-note, big old expensive chord. But before we get into it, let's hear it again at stepdad speed. <laughs> And if you want to see a cheapest free tab for this lick, be sure to go to my Instagram page, which you can find over on Instagram at Ben Eller Guitars. Find the tab for this week's lick and upload a video of yourself playing it along with the hashtag Weekend Wank Shop. Also be sure to follow me for cool pictures of dogs and food and guitars and other good stuff. Alright, so the first part of the lick is playing through that A6-9 arpeggio in two different octaves. So let me kind of show you the basic shape that we're using so that way you can visualize this. Pretty easy to see. What we're going to do here is we're going to play 5, 7, and 9 on the low E string, that's the root, ninth, and third of the chord. And then on the A string here, we're gonna play seven and nine, that's the five and the six. So that gives us all the uh, uh, chord degrees that we need to make that six slash nine chord. Now the next part of this sequence starts off on the D string here, fret number seven, and then nine and 11. And again, this is giving you root, nine, and third. And then on the G string here, 9 and 11, you're going to have the 5th and the 6th. An easy way to think of this is it's very similar to like the My Girl bass line. Kind of gives you a little frame of reference there. Okay, so within those two octaves of that arpeggio, what we're going to do is to start off by playing the root note, 5th fret, low E string here, with a hybrid picked middle finger note. I advise using a little bit of fingernail in there to get some extra snap out of it. I've also got a compressor running pretty heavily right now. It's an exotic SP compressor, as well as a TC Electronics doing a little slapback delay just for added grease. So what we're gonna do is to start off with that middle finger hybrid pick in the low E string fret number five. Then what we're gonna do is have a muted pick stroke. So that's not actually a real note, that's just a ghost note right there, so just mute the strings. After that ghost note, pluck the seventh fret low E string and slide it to nine. After this, what you're gonna do is to play the seventh fret A, ninth fret A, and then pull back off to seven. So all together that went. Next, let's do the exact same thing in the next octave up. So I'm gonna start off on the seventh fret D string. Again, that's the root note, the same as that was the root note. So we're going to pluck it, muted stroke, uh, pluck again on the ninth, slide into 11th on the D. Then on the G string here, I'm gonna play nine, 11, pulling back off to nine. So, so far you got. Notice it's got a little swing to it, it's not. Although you could do that and that'd be cool too. 
And the very last part of the lick is going to play the 10th fret on the B string with a pluck. Again, I'm really snapping that string there just to get that good chicken picking kind of clucking sound. So I get 10th fret B, 7th fret B, 5th fret B, and again, we're not going outside of the arpeggio here. That was the root, that was the 6, that was the 5. It'd be the same as just going back down the way you came. And then the very last thing we're going to do is right here on the G string, fret number 5. Now this is outside of the chord. This is the minor third instead of the major third, so a C note instead of a C sharp. But this is just one of those kind of country and rockabilly isms. It sounds cool against the dominant or major chord to use the minor third and the major third. Now what I'm doing here is I start off with a ghost note on the G string that I'm picking. So again, it's just a dead note. Then I'm gonna pluck the fifth fret G, hammer on to six, and then wrap it up by hitting the seventh fret on the D string, which again is the root. So that whole last section went. And then the chord I wrapped up on here is just a big A, six slash nine. Open A string, 4th fret D, 4th fret G, 5th fret B, 5th fret high E. And again, that gives you root, 6, 9, 5, and root. So one more time all the way through here. We got the two octaves of the arpeggio. Then descend down the B. Try it again. Yo kids, another sick lick to add to the good old wank bank. Sure it does sound expensive, but it's not gonna make you any money. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Ben Eller Guitars. And also if you're interested in booking some one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons, be sure to drop me an email, BenEllerGuitars at gmail.com. We'll talk rates and times and all that other good stuff. Stay tuned for another sick lick next week as well as a brand new episode of This Is Why You Suck at Guitar that I'm gonna be working on here really soon. Cool stuff afoot. Thank you guys again. Cheers.